And the relocation program was in the beginning a totally voluntary uh, program uh, where if you agreed to get some training and leave the reservation, the Bureau would assist you for up to six months sometimes uh, with basic needs until you became established in a large urban environment. So they had these 11 pieces of legislation that was going to terminate all of our tribal status and take our land and then they would have all of our tribal resources as well. They felt like as long as they stayed on the reservation, the Bureau of Indian Affairs was gonna to continue to be oppressive of them. So you had some liberal Democrats who sort of had that feeling. Uh, on the other hand, you had some conservative Republicans who wanted Indians off the reservation so they could have access to Indian natural resources. So it's sort of a mixed bag. Well, I think they use multiple arguments and, and the one that seems to pop up most often in the literature is that if you leave the reservation and, and move um, uh, to a city, first of all, we'll give you, a, we'll, we'll find a job for you. We'll find financial you know, uh, aid that will help you make the transition. More importantly, you'll be out from under the oppressive thumb of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The Relocation Act was primarily to assimilate and acculturate the indigenous peoples of the United States. And yet once they arrived, they discovered very quickly that the, Bureau, the, the amount of support that the Bureau said it was going to provide really fell far short of what they actually needed to make the transition. And they discovered very quickly that the discrimination that they faced on the reservation, they were now facing in the urban area. But in a lot of other communities, if you leave the reservation, and if you've been gone for more than six months, you're no longer recognized by the tribal government. And when you look at the services that the federal government is supposed to provide to American Indians, um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service, the two leading agencies, they have very restrictive policies uh, and, and, and don't provide many services at all to urban Indians. And I think that's an absolute violation of the treaty rights that we, uh, that we enjoy. The Relocation Act has brought a lot of uh, programs for Native peoples in, 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 into the big city. AIM, AIM is probably a, one of the organizational offshoots of the Relocation Act, unintentional, of course. But the fact that you had multiple tribes, all of whom were being victimized by police brutality, uh, discriminatory practices, and, and so on, uh, I think that, that really led to the creation of this, what one sociologist calls a supra-tribal identity. They had many different ways that they wanted to use to get rid of Indians, and the relocation program was one of them. And I guess from their point of view, it was very effective because they got thousands of Indian people to leave the reservation. I believe that you're indigenous no matter where you are, if you maintain a clear connection to your homeland. See. Now they've got focuses. They do go back to the reservation and they become attorneys and tribal judges and doctors, physicians. When multiple tribes gather together, they essentially create a new culture, a new identity. And yet only a handful of tribes today officially recognize their citizens who actually live in urban areas. And the urbanization of our peoples is stronger now than it has ever been. Uh, some 60% of American Indians live in urban areas. And, and I think the very definition of what is, what does it mean to be indigenous is being changed right now.